This is literally the edge of Australia. Cape York in northern Queensland. It sits well within a broad band that circles the earth between the Tropic of Cancer in the north and the Tropic of Capricorn in the south. Countries within this band share similar characteristics, but with an important exception, screwworm fly. We don't have it, and we are the only continent in this region that doesn't have it. It's a parasite, and the exotic animal disease that most directly threatens Australia. Screwworm fly isn't fussy. It will infest anything warm-blooded and alive. That counts out reptiles and fish, but includes everything else, and that includes people. There are two types of screwworm fly. The New World screwworm fly, which inhabits Central and Southern America, and the Old World screwworm fly, which inhabits Central Africa, the Middle East, India and Southeast Asia. It is the Old World screwworm fly that poses the greatest risk to Australia. To the north of us is New Guinea. The screwworm fly is endemic to New Guinea and Torres Strait is dotted with islands like stepping stones that lead straight here. I believe that the risk and the chance of screwworm getting into Australia and becoming established is fairly high. Well, apart from island hopping, there's also a lot of trade between the islands and the Torres Strait and between New Guinea and Australia. And that is all part of the Torres Strait Agreement. So there is free travel between those two countries. Fortunately, the, the quarantine situation is, is good in that area, but there's still that risk that people or animals on board canoes or boats could be infested with screw and fly and get into Australia that way. Well, the most likely other source uh, one would imagine for screw and fly to get into Australia would be on livestock vessels that are coming back from parts of the world where screw and fly is present. Um, in recent years, there's been a great expansion of the live cattle export trade out of northern ports to um, Indonesia. Malaysia, the Philippines, and all of these areas are areas where screwworm fly is endemic. If screwworm fly does establish in the tropical region of Australia, that the climatic conditions would be suitable, at least in summer, for it to migrate further south, possibly into Victoria, and then in winter uh, regress uh, back to the, the northern areas. Uh, so potentially we're not looking at just a problem of tropical Australia, we're looking at a, a problem Australia-wide. Female screwworm that are ready to lay their eggs must seek a host, a warm-blooded animal with a suitable wound or some site where they can lay their eggs. And in the case of livestock at least, uh, a suitable site would be any sort of scratch or cut, any body orifice with a discharge, uh, any wound caused through animal practice such as uh, barbed wire cuts, castration wounds, uh, branding, ear tagging, all these create wounds. Even ticks, a tick bite on an animal is sufficient opening through the skin for the screw and fly to find that wound and to lay its eggs. To the untrained eye, the adult fly is unremarkable in colour and size. It looks similar to some of the common species of blowfly found in Australia. The body is dark blue, the head orange and the eyes burgundy. Females lay eggs on the dry edges of wounds. This usually takes place in late afternoon and evening. Up to 200 eggs are deposited. The female only mates once, but she can deposit more eggs at four-day intervals. The eggs are brilliant white, cylindrical and rounded at both ends. They are tiny, only just visible, and are cemented together in a shingle pattern, like a tiled roof. Depending upon the temperature, they hatch in 10 to 20 hours. There are three stages during the development of the larvae. In this first stage, the larvae are tiny. They move onto the wound and begin to feed superficially on the surface fluids. The term for this infestation of living tissue is myasis. The second stage is marked by an increase in size of the larvae. They will eventually grow up to 15 millimeters in length. They are white to cream in color. Notice the mouth hooks and the bands of dark spines that give the fly its name. In the third and most dramatic stage, 
The larvae have begun to enlarge and deepen the wound. They are liquefying tissue and rupturing blood vessels. The wound is hemorrhaging and producing a fluid with a foul odour. These tertiary stages of the screwworm fly myasis are the easiest to identify. Sometimes the size of your fist. They are deep and seized with larvae in a soupy fluid of liquefied tissue and blood. It is attractive to other female screwworm fly and common blowflies. The surrounding area is swollen and hot to touch. Mature larvae now wriggle from the lesion and drop to the ground. They burrow into the soil to a depth of two to three centimetres, turn upright and pupate. Depending upon the temperature, this pupal stage takes seven days, though cooler weather may prolong the process as much as 60 days. Males and females emerge in equal numbers. The males are sexually mature in 24 hours, the females in three days. The fly lives for about 15 days. We need to remember also that the screw fly lesions don't necessarily have to be large and dramatic such as you often see in, in photographs, that they can in fact and frequently are manifest as small weeping sores which may be very easily overlooked or dismissed as something else. Any deep fly strike lesions you come across in a living animal should be suspect. The screw worm fly maggot burrows deep. Collect about ten, but remove as many as possible. The larvae should be dropped into hot water for one to two minutes to preserve colour and shape, then stored in 80% alcohol. If you can't do this, put the larvae directly into alcohol or methylated spirits. Dead flies can be packaged unpreserved. Send the samples to the nearest government vet or stock inspector. In endemic areas of the world where screwworm exists, every husbandry practice associated with the um, with wounds, including um, castration and dehorning, must be accompanied by a regular inspection of those wounds to make sure that the fly does not become established. If the fly got into Australia, we would have to do a similar, um, highly expensive procedures associated with surveillance of our stock. So it's likely that over much of the northern properties. Um, the maintenance of stock may well become um, in, not commercially viable. So there'll be large-scale changes in the, the structure of communities in northern Australia if this screw and fly got in, including sort of severe upsets of the human population. But more than that, there's also the other effects on the um, native mammals of Australia. Um, many of those are going to suffer um, severe problems because they're naive to this... this um, Organism. The screw worm fly doesn't necessarily kill an animal. It can be treated, usually by an application of larvicides. Each individual animal, particularly the newborn, must be treated and watched every day. There's one way to eradicate the screw worm fly. You build a factory and produce sterile male flies by the millions. This is a factory in Mexico. The larvae are bred and grown to the pupal stage. Then they are irradiated, exposed to gamma radiation, which renders them sterile. The female screwworm fly only mates once, and if the population is swamped with these sterile males, then the chance of fertile eggs being laid is reduced. This method has eradicated the fly from the southern United States and Mexico, some Caribbean islands, and most recently Libya. It works brilliantly and costs a fortune. The only place where you will see screwworm fly, if it should get into Australia, will be in a wound of a warm-blooded live animal. 
not in any other situation, not in dung, not in fruit, not even in decomposing carcasses of animals. It is only found in living, warm-blooded animals. So we're not only looking for screwworm fly in livestock, but we also should be aware that we could find it in pet animals and also, of course, ourselves, humans. If you see the, the, these lesions, this cavernous lesion with a, 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 a pungent, sickly, sweet smell and a, a persistent discharge, you should be thinking screwworm fly mice or screwworm fly strike.